Hi everyone, I'm Ron and welcome to week three of learning computer science in two years. Before we dive into this video, I just want to take the time to thank you guys. Thank you so much for leaving comments on videos. It really means a lot to me. It helps motivate me to keep working on this degree, to keep putting in the hours, uh, to keep filling in my spreadsheet because it, I know there are real people out there watching the video and following my progress. And it's especially cool to see that some of you guys are actually <laughs> in the same boat as I am, right? Uh, going through this course material, working on this degree and grinding every single day to try and become a computer scientist. So good luck for everybody on the same path. And again, thank you so much for leaving comments, watching the videos, clicking like, all those nice things. That's it. Let's uh, look over here and see what happened in week three of my studies. So, first of all, if we go look at our timesheet, we can see that, again, I did manage to put in almost 30 hours, though some to 29. But I'm going to give myself that because I do round down pretty much every single time. So uh, there's probably 15 minutes here and 15 minutes there. And uh, before you know it, it's 30, right? So let's just say I did do about 30 hours. So let's get into the meat and potato, so to speak. First of all, how to code complex data. So at the beginning of this week, I felt like I had, it, I had to go back and do some more practice problems or examples or maybe even watch a couple of videos. If you recall from the previous update, I said something along those lines. Now, what did happen is when I got back into it, I noticed that there was a whole quiz I never did on abstraction, which was the section I was feeling a bit funny about. So I went back and I did that quiz and afterwards it really started from like the easiest type question up to the very difficult stuff. So working through that uh, from the basics up to the more advanced levels uh, really helped a lot. And turns out I didn't really need to rehash as much as I thought I would. From there I continued and I got all the way up to the end of week 11, so to speak, which is accumulators. And uh, somewhere in between, I did general recursion and some other things as well. I mean, you can all go look up the course uh, on EDX or wherever. You'll see exactly what I had to do to get up to accumulators. I actually finished accumulators. So that's the end of week 11, which means I should only have one more week left as far as how to code is concerned. Well, as far as how to code complex data is concerned. I thought it would be fun to show you guys what I actually did, right? Or what were some of the results that came from this week? So I decided on showing you guys a couple of general recursion programs that I wrote because look, they just have nice pictures that I can show you. So the first one that I have over here is one of a, ach, it's a general recursion circle, right? And you basically draw a circle in the middle and then you draw another circle on top and on the sides and you go around every single time. And you make this little flower, flower, flowerly looking thing, whatever that word looking thing. If I can show you, let's, let's do this. And you can see, I actually ran the program and I ran it with different sizes of starting circle. And you can see, I have a nice big one and I have a little tiny one, which is just starting size of 30, which is the, the radius of the big circle circle in the middle. Pretty cool. I mean, it's not anything mind blowing, but it is kind of cool that you can actually make these shapes all through code. And I can change this number how much if I want and it'll make different things. I'm not going to show you that for this one now, but what I want to show you is this one, which is Cantor. And you know what? I'm just going to show you by running the program and then just giving it a starting value. Let's make it 0.33. And it makes this window, right? And in this window, we have these bars. And as you can see, the, there's a big blue bar. And then there's a blue bar, a white space, and a blue bar. And that pattern kind of follows all the way down to some minimum size. And what's kind of interesting here is I can control the size of the white space depending on where I click with my mouse. Pretty cool. So if I click on this side, which is close to 0x, that means the white space is going to be very small. Click it, there you can see it's 
very small white space and we actually get f way further down where there's many more levels to this picture because of the white space being so small if i click all the way over here it's the opposite you see <laughs> the the percentage of the white space increases and i can click this as many times as i want it'll just keep updating every single time well that's generative recursion okay which was somewhere in between those two modules that i started with and it's it's pretty nice so going into this week i will probably finish how to code complex data or at least the course part and then i'll get into the final project so i'll do that as well i'm not going to skip this one and in fact i'm actually going to go back to how to code simple data and i'm going to do that final project as well because i I want to finish it, right? It didn't feel right just skipping over it like that. I think it's worth my time to go back and revisit that final project as well. Hopefully I can finish both those, uh, both of those projects in this week and then I can show it to you guys in next week's update. Then on the calculus front, how is that going? Well, honestly, the calculus is going very well, surprisingly well, in fact. Um, I've spent, if you look at the spreadsheet again, I've spent 25 hours so far on the calculus out of a potential 80 or something like that. And I'm almost done. Like there's only two sections of the last unit left to go and I'm through. Um, what that means is I'd probably be able to finish the coursework and then I'm going to go look for some problem sets to do and maybe a exam paper to to work through as well and i mentioned this before but i think it's worth just mentioning again uh, if we actually go to osu again if you want to follow along in osu uh, or in github the osu page we have this alternative for the calculus right so this is where we're going to get our problem set so if you follow alternative you will get to mit open courseware and this is where we're going to find our problem set. So if you click on differentiation, uh, we can see here, okay, basic rules, blah, 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 problem set one, then implicit differentiation and inverse functions, problem set two, and then there's the exam. So that is what I'm planning on doing this week, potentially after finishing the course on MIT Open Learning Library. And actually, now that I look at this, I'm sure yes i've done this as well applications uh so applications of differentiation which is approximation and curve sketching i've done that optimization uh related rates and newton's method i've done quite a bit of that as well i definitely did newton's method i could potentially do problem set three and four as well which is amazing that's quite a lot of work so Mm, it's probably going to take me more than one week. I'd probably do this over two more weeks or something like that. Maybe I can even do this one after finish after I finish the, the coursework completely. Then I'm pretty much done with differentiation completely. Then I'll do problem set five and I'll do the second exam as well. Fantastic. It's a bit of a roadmap for calculus, what I'm planning on doing. And uh, you know what, let's look at some of the coding stuff as well so that we can see what the roadmap looks like for that as well. So if we go back to the OSU page, I will be done with how to code simple data and complex data, hopefully by the end of this week. Then we're gonna go to program languages part A. Let's take a look at this. So my, th my first thought when I opened this link was, great, another website or another platform for doing the course. Uh, this is now our fourth platform, I think. I mean, it's not a big deal for platforms. That's not the end of the world. So hopefully that's not a big hassle and it, it's easy to manage and I can just kind of dive into it straight away. So let's see actually, what is this about? So it does say it's intermediate level. I'm feeling good about that because uh, that means that we won't be rehashing a lot of the stuff that we've already done in how to code and CS50 in my case, which is something I was kind of worried about. It feels like a lot of these courses on the might be starting from a very fundamental level and it, you are redoing a lot of the things of, of the basic concepts, which, you know, now that I say that, it doesn't actually sound that bad because uh, the basics are the foundation on which you become a good programmer and probably a good computer scientist as well so 
in the end, more time spent on the basics, on those building blocks, the foundations, probably not a bad thing. So, you know what? I welcome it. Let's see if they want to rehash some of the basics. Uh, if they do, that's great. If they don't, uh, I'm, I'm happy with that as well. So it is intermediate level, which probably means we're going to get stuck into more difficult concepts faster than, for instance, with how to code. But I'm I'm happy about that. Let's uh, see how it goes. Let's see if I even get to it. I'm I might not start with this uh, in the next week. So yeah, we'll see if I get there. I guess. Well, that's it for this week. Please continue leaving comments. It helps me out greatly. And uh, good luck to everybody that's also doing computer science on their own. <laughs> it's not easy, but I think it's worth it. Like always. Please like the video. If you did, click the button, obviously. Don't just like it, click the button. And uh, subscribe if you want more updates. And that's all. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.